please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. On this one, you can see from the pure silver where it's taken all the anodizing off that that's, got, that's even worse than the other pin. So big hang up on this side. Now let's spin the Dunlop wheel. Now we've got matched rotors in width and see if it spins any better at all. Yep, almost the same as the Rosso 2 does. That's substantially better, but it's still atrocious. Why? All right, let's take a look at the calipers based on the mileage we've done. First thing is pad wear. Are they both equidistant in wear? So in other words, is that the same depth as that and clearly it's a total mismatch. All we're looking for is the amount of pad on the backing plate left. So on my left thumb that's quite a bit. If I move my thumb across we're out of brake pad on this side completely and we need to change them. So there's a question here of why is that pad wear uneven when it would appear that the pistons are fairly equidistant. Fairly. The pistons seem like they've got a sheen to them, so they're not that dirty, but we're going to clean them anyway because we're going to change pads because that's got nothing left. And at that point, the other thing we've got to do is when we change them, our brake pins have to come out. So there's a piece here because a pin is a wear item. Is the pin on this side here actually grooved or notched, which is hanging this pad up diagonally? and causing it to wear faster. The other piece of the puzzle of that as well is when we pull the pad out, is it wearing flat or is the wear across this side angled? So the front edge is super thin and the bottom edge is really fat. So we've got quite a bit of review here to figure out why we're getting the wear we're getting and then we'll do exactly the same on the other side. First thing is to get the pins out. There we go. Pads come out. So, the one thing we wanted to look at was where, and this side, by and large, is accurate. This direction, and when we flick it over, it's accurate in that direction too. So, these are wearing perfectly flat and still on both sides. So, we know the pistons are moving evenly as well. So, our right caliper is working just fine, which will mean that brake pins, see how it's got a shiny spot on it? And that polish mark is from where the brake pads hang on the pin. Meaning, there. So they rub backwards and forwards on it as they're moved out and retracted. The question becomes over time, does that shiny spot then become a flat spot and then become a groove or a V to hang the pad up so then the pad goes this way. It stops moving laterally, it pivots. So clearly both of these are fine. Yep, they just need a quick clean with a scotch. Oh no, nope, not so much. That one's definitely worn. And I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but right the there's a flat spot developing and then there's a much smaller one up here so it's getting time to order a set of pins to replace them and these are not the only wear item either brake bolts as these have been changed almost daily very soft metal on the heads so the heads deform so brake bolts for the caliper are as much a wear item as brake pad pins so if the tool starts slipping and your Allen doesn't quite fit right, replace them because they're not very expensive at all. So at this point, we know that that's got a bit of a flat spot on both. So we'll clean them up, but brake pins need to be ordered as pretty quick here along with two or three sets of fork seals. So we've got spares for what we need for the trash or treasure bike.
There we go. Now when your pad material gets super thin, then there's nowhere to disperse the heat through the material. So you can always tell when brake pads get hot because the backing plate starts to discolor. Orange is not as hot as blue and that's very true of titanium. And we turn them around on this side, we can also see heavy discoloration on both sides. So the brake pads, because the material was so thin, got incredibly hot. And we can see the colors on this side too, as well as all the little circles and shapes. They're a different color or different tone, but we still have pinks and blues in there on the pads themselves. So be careful saying I've got plenty of pad left because you might be not only getting everything really hot, which isn't good for the brake pads or the rotors, but the worst part is where you're putting all that heat. It's going into your braking system and your brake fluid. So if you wonder why I change brake fluid every couple hours on the race bike and every six track days on my coaching bike, hopefully this makes sense. So when you do clean, please make sure you take a look at the back of your brake pads and see if you are getting a lot of discoloration through heat. So we already identified that the wear was really bad because they're offset in depth. So it still seems to be straight across in that there's not diagonal wear that way. There is not. Then we need to go sideways and there is diagonal wear. It's very slight, but there is diagonal wear that can be seen. It's a very slight off angle line. Let's check on the other side to see if that's the case. Not so much actually. So our pad was getting angled, which is interesting. So when, what that means is this pad was getting pushed this way first, because this is more worn down and that way. So we had a lateral as well as a yaw in the pad, getting this section of the pad really hitting first. That's why there's a lot more spots and discoloration on this side than there is on this. Possibly the beginning of a sticking piston, uh, but we're getting in there with a toothbrush, so that should alleviate the issue. And if that's the case, that'd be great. Now, remember we were talking about flat spots, hanging, the, hanging everything up? You can see that one as clear as day. There's a couple of dig points in it, but yeah, that's pretty obvious. So those pin, the order for the pins became urgent. On this one, you can see from the pure silver where it's taken all the anodizing off that that's, got, that's even worse than the other pin. So big hang up on this side, and that may explain why the pad wear is very different left to right. As soon as we get these in hand, we can swap those straight away off the caliper between wheel changes, so this is urgent. Now the caliper's clean, the other caliper is mounted and in place with the bolts intact. So now we can, we're free to squeeze the brake lever and see what pistons move and what pistons don't move. So these two are pulsing, that one's coming out first, so that's the cleanest one. Yeah, so that one, as it came out, we'll scrub a little more and then we've got to hold that one still, pump the lever again and see which one moves next. So a quick scrub on this and then leaving the soap on it isn't a bad thing. When it dries, it'll capture some of the brake dust and stop it pitting the piston surface, which is not a bad thing at all. But we don't have time for that, so we gotta Wipe it all out. Uh, 
Okay, so we know that piston works, so we'll push it. And then if we push this, we need to see if any of the others move. Those two prays are still the same, and this one hasn't moved yet. Still not much movement. Maybe a little more on this one. So we've got that one all the way in. And it doesn't look like these three moved at all. So now I've got to hold this and pump again and see what happens next. So that's the next piston to move. So we'll clean that one. So those are compressed. Okay, so it looks like these two are stuck. So now we need something to fill that gap. They're gonna be wide enough? Possibly. No, it needs, we need something bigger. So we've got to fill this gap up so we'll see what we've got for wood or something. Well, oh. we've, got, we've got three used brake pads in there. So the next one to move is the top. Yep, so we'll clean that one. <sighs> Get my finger in the back side. No. All right, so it's all going to be this way. And that one still didn't move. So we'll put those aside. Get our three pads again. And this is where it becomes extremely difficult and you can't do this by yourself anymore at this stage. So those will go back into there. Okay. I have to hold this one and then Dave has to pump the lever until that one breaks free, but I've got to make sure the brake pads are not holding it back. So I have to switch fingers here. Okay, go. Keep going. There it goes. One more. Good, stop. Okay. All right, we got the last one out. So now we'll clean that, scrub it, Push all four pistons back in, now they're perfectly clean. Put the new, pad, new Volar pads in, we're going to keep with the same ones simply because that brake material is already on the rotors on every wheel. That keeps things nice and simple. So now with every, everything cleaned, finding stuck pistons, freeing them up and being able to put everything back together pristine clean and new pads which haven't been heat cycled yet. Much better with this wheel. So that's the viability or the why as to getting a toothbrush out and cleaning your calipers on a regular basis and making sure that you don't get sticking pistons. But for now, with the same pads, because they're mated to all the rotors, when time is passing and the brake pads bed in, does that eighth of an inch, quarter of a circle come back with a drag? Or does it stay much freer now because everything's been cleaned with a toothbrush and we've made sure all the pistons move and retract evenly? Time will tell.